Welcome to rainy London. Thankfully, what I've got to talk to you about involves us being indoors in the Institute of Making. I want to talk to you about my entry-level material science course. It's designed for a range of disciplines from art to architecture, from chemistry to physics to engineering to anthropology. And it requires no prerequisites. My approach is a reaction to two problems I've encountered over the years trying to teach material science. The first problem is that material science is often separated from design and the making of things. And by separating them, we implicitly give theory more status than practice when understanding materials. We also separate materials from their meaning. The second problem is that because there's an ever-increasing set of new materials technologies, traditional material science courses have had to face difficult choices to avoid syllabus bloat. The subject is now so vast that knowing what to include and what to omit is an increasingly conflicted choice. The philosophy of my course has three guiding principles. One, learn by doing. Two, learn theory as and when you need it. And three, make material science meaningful, both technologically, socially and culturally. The course is project-based. I set the students a brief and they have to design, make and test a product to meet that brief. Along the way, they learn the fundamentals of material science. One year the brief was transformative footwear, another year it was protective headgear, and another year it was eating utensils. The important thing about setting a brief is that every student reacts to it differently, and so every student designs and makes a different product. This makes the learning experience individual to that student and makes their materials choices meaningful. I follow a standard design paradigm of design, make, test. This maps onto three core material science topics, materials selection, materials processing, and materials properties. Designs start out as sketches, then they're realized in CAD, and then as physical models using 3D printing. I introduce the students to materials through hands-on exploration of our materials library. I encourage them to explore material properties through their senses, how they feel, smell, and even taste. They get to experience density, hardness, elasticity of a wide variety of materials. They get to know them and understand that materials properties are real. Then I introduce them to where these materials properties come from. I take them on a tour of the microscopic nano and atomic scale. And show how when they change these structures, they change the material properties, whether they be density, plasticity, elasticity or taste. We discuss how changes in the structure quantitatively affect the material properties such as strength. Then I introduce the students to the grant of CES software, which teaches them how to use quantified materials properties to make materials choices. Then the students have to make their prototype project. Again, we teach the students the skills they need as and when they need them. For instance, some may need to learn electronics, others might need to learn how to throw a ceramic pot, while others need to use the laser cutter or to cast silicone rubber. The course is assessed through four outcomes, a video, a prototype, a portfolio and an engineering report. So what have the students learned and have I achieved what I set out to do, which is to avoid syllabus bloat and make material science meaningful? Feedback from the students is that they find it an enjoyable course, if a bit stressful, because they're constantly failing and failing and failing again. But that's what makes it a meaningful learning experience, a real learning experience. And it's also what makes the materials come alive and become real, come out of the page. They're not just bits of theory, they're not just numbers, they're real stuff. The course addresses the problem of syllabus bloat by only dealing with concepts as and when they're needed. However, this has two downsides. The first is that project-based learning means they have to use class time to learn skills such as sketching and CAD, which while useful in themselves, are not core material science. The other downside is that a student who chooses to make something from recycled plastics learns a lot of material science about plastics but not as much about other materials. My defense of this approach and the downsides associated with it 
is that I've helped students understand the process of how to learn about material science. And if they need to learn about metals in the future, they know how to go about it. They have to design something, choose the materials, make it and test it. Secondly, the students emerge from the course having had a challenging but very tactile and engaged experience. They have learned about materials by making an object and by failing. And it helps them understand the relationship between theory, craft, design and manufacture. That's it for now. Thanks for watching. I imagine this video raises more questions than it answers. But that's the intention. It's part of a flipped talk for the 2017-18 Materials Education Symposia held in the UK, USA and Singapore. See you there, or online, or email me your questions.